don't know if he does. I've never been to the North Pole. I know I try to keep where I live a secret, so maybe he does too. So what if nobody's ever seen his house at the North Pole? That doesn't mean it's not there, and it doesn't mean that he doesn't have a house. It just means that people haven't seen it. Some people say that he flies in a helicopter now. Well, I doubt that very much. It could be true, but I doubt it very much because my mother... My mother told me that he flies around in a sleigh with reindeer, and she wouldn't lie to me, not about something that important. It was just last week I was positive. I was sitting there in the living room with Mary. I was positive I heard Santa's sleigh and reindeer hooves up on the roof. And I wouldn't lie to you about that. Thank you, Yvonne. 12.32 the time. You know, maybe the real confusion about Santa Claus and whether or not he's real comes from, uh, again, another misunderstanding as to just what it is that Santa Claus does. Well, first and foremost, Santa Claus listens to dreams and hopes and wishes. And secondly, he helps us to be good. And you know that's true. And thirdly... He fills our hearts with joy and hope. Now, make no mistake about it. Santa and the elves are top-notch, first-rate toy makers, and they have been for quite a number of years, more than I've been alive. And Santa does indeed go all over the world each and every Christmas Eve, delivering toys and presents to extra-special boys and girls. That is indeed a fact. Maybe he doesn't stop at every house. Well, all of the toys under your tree, are they from Santa? I don't know. I can't say for sure that they are. But I'll tell you this much. If you don't believe, and I mean really believe in Santa, then why should he leave anything for you? Now, some people say that it's silly to believe in Santa Claus. They point out that You'll still get presents anyway, and that's the truth. You will. You don't have to believe. So maybe you do get presents. But what you don't get is the joy of believing in Santa Claus. It's not quite the same if you don't really believe. You see, believing in Santa Claus is really very easy when you're, when you're very young. And as you grow older... Well, that belief just doesn't come quite as easy as it once did. Because of all this confusion and misunderstanding. And I admit that it doesn't always make sense. It doesn't always make sense that a man and his elves would go all, to, all over the world, go to all of that trouble, work all year long, tirelessly, effortlessly, without any compensation at all. I admit that doesn't make any sense. Some people will argue that there are too many boys and girls for Santa Claus to give toys to. And that there isn't enough time to visit every house in every corner of the world. They'll give you all kinds of reasons for why Santa Claus doesn't exist. But whoever said that he stops and visits each and every house? I mean, I can't explain how it's done. I'm not Santa Claus. The fact of the matter is... If you don't want to believe in Santa Claus, you don't have to. Santa's not going to take away your toys. He's not going to put coal in your stockings. He's not that kind of a guy. He'll understand, because it's hard to believe. Of course, his feelings will be hurt. But he'll understand, because he knows just how hard it is to believe. How hard it is to believe that there's someone in this world, who has no ulterior motives, who expects nothing in return, whose heart is filled with love and caring. He knows that's hard to believe. Santa, you know, doesn't expect anything in return from you, so he doesn't get mad. He just gets sad. But Santa Claus isn't, isn't really just about toys and trees and, and bright lights and presents and... All that kind of stuff. What he's really about is hope, innocence, caring, 
joy in giving. Like I said, sometimes these things are hard to believe in. But the best thing about him, about Santa, is that you can always go back. You can always go back and be his friend again. You can always go back and believe again. And you can pick right up where you left off, no matter how many years have gone by. Now look at me. I'm 42 years old. I believe. I didn't always. But I sure do now. I mean, if there was no Santa Claus, I want you to think about this. If there was no Santa Claus, how is it that a grown man who doesn't really believe in anything else could believe in him? Answer that one if you can. Tell me there's no Santa Claus. You're only kidding yourself. But I didn't really come here to defend Santa Claus. I came here to bring you home with me. Came here to bring you home with me for Christmas. Home in the very earliest days when my parents were still together was 128 Maple Avenue in Woodland, New Jersey. As I've already told you, it was a small two-bedroom, red brick row house. Nothing very special about it. Just that room upstairs in the back with the pirates on the, on the wall. Christmas Eve was spent at my grandmother's Christmas Day at that house. You see, Christmas is really two days in, in my family. Now, my grandmother's house, that was in Camden. It, too, was a red brick row house, although much, much larger, on a double lot. It was at the end of the row, with a great big yard and a garage out back. My grandmother was a huge woman and probably the best cook that there ever, ever was. She wasn't a fancy cook. She was just a good cook. And she liked to serve her food in a very fancy way. My grandfather, who I called Jaji, well, he was a strange man. Jaji was a wallpaper hanger and a carpenter. He was literally a one-legged wallpaper hanger and carpenter. But he had the strangest accent. Though he was from Eastern Europe, he had an Italian accent. Because he was taught how to speak English by an Italian friend. And there was also my father's sister who lived in that house, Aunt Irene. Aunt Irene was a classic first-generation American. She was a legal secretary, a social climber. There was my dad... He was a very handsome man, hard worker. He worked all day as a tool and die maker, and almost every night of the week, he went out and worked as a, an accordion player. Seems kind of silly now, but back then in the 1930s and the 1940s, it was a very popular in instrument, and my dad was a pretty popular guy in high school. And he played the accordion well enough that he probably made more money doing that than he did working as a tool and die maker. And there was my mother. My mother was a stunningly beautiful woman. Oh, I know all boys think that their mothers are stunningly beautiful. Of course, mine really was. You do understand that, don't you? Well, that's all there really was to that side of the family. But while my parents were together... We went to my grandmother's house every Christmas Eve. We would arrive in my father's black 1949 Pontiac. And the excitement would start to build. Go bounding out of the car, run up the steps, ring the doorbell. There would be my grandmother. The great big hug. You'd step inside the the door at 928 Morton Street. And mind you, this is this is a row home owned by a one-legged carpenter and his wife who worked in a cigar factory. But it wasn't the home of a working-class family. My grandparents were 
people who appreciated 